Hi, I'm Randy McLean, the president of Waypoint Analytics. I have my good friend Bruce Merrifield with me. Thanks for uh, coming and spending some time with us today. Um, Bruce is a master tactician in uh, wholesale distribution best practices and has um, uh, led uh, countless uh, successful turnarounds. Today we're going to talk about Amazon supply and what, that, uh, what the impact of that is going to be and take a look at some of the dynamics uh, because uh, when we look inside that, uh, there's actually quite a lot of opportunity for us. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the dynamics of what's going on, what Amazon has in mind, what kinds of things we should do about it, and uh, what kind of results we can get and how to get there. So, uh, so the, for the next few minutes, we're going to uh, basically zero in on that. Good. So it's been big news that uh, Amazon is, uh, is getting into the B2B market. And if you think about what they've done, they've done B2C, business to consumer, for a long time. And uh, their real power is a big logistics uh, capability, a very, very, maybe the best um, uh, logistics capability in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that they started off just, you know, shipping books and then CDs and, and videos. Uh, but somewhere along the line, they recognized that the logistics power they had uh, could be used across all markets and started setting up the Amazon marketplace and have a lot of people that sell through Amazon beside themselves and have expanded their um, uh, their reach into nearly everything that's consumer oriented and now are moving into business. And so this will be big news for uh, all of our clients in the, in the, in the coming future. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted to start off by talking about just in terms of competitive strategy, uh, uh, there are, there's always a barrier to switching. People um, have a, a habit, a velocity, um, uh, systems in place to be able to buy from you. Um, and if somebody else comes and wants, you, wants to move, there has to be enough motivation to get there. So uh, coming through with just parity isn't enough. They have to have superiority in some way, whether it's in pricing or delivery or reliability or quality or, or the, the target product. They have to have something to, to move uh, somebody uh, uh, out of your business or to move customers out of your business. And Amazon's no different. They have to deal with the same thing. So they're going to be coming in uh, looking at uh, giving uh, very high quality service. Um, they're going to try and do it probably at a lower price, although they're going to want to maintain margins as, uh, where they have to because, or where they can because the, the profits are there. So. Uh, but they do have a logistics chain that a lot of people will have a lot of difficulty competing with. And so uh, uh, what do you see as the dynamics that, are gonna, that people are going to be fighting uh, as Amazon comes into the marketplace? Well, first of all, uh, I have to confess that, that I am a diehard Amazon fan. I mean, I, I've, I have no idea how many tens of thousands of dollars I've spent at Amazon as a prime. I buy stuff you can't even imagine. I mean, I, I, I go in there and they've got it and I look at all the reviews and, um, and you know, things I never heard of before, that I buy it. If it's got 172 reviews and they're 4.4 .4 stars, boy, I read, it's fantastic. So anyway, I'm, and, and you know, as a, a student of distribution channels, I can tell you more about Walmart's continuous replenishment or Amazon's fulfillment, you know, model or et cetera. I just finished reading the Everywhere store. I don't necessarily recommend it, um, you know, to the average, distributor executive, uh, but, you know, people that really are more serious about it would read it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit flawed, but the guy still, you know, g g gives a lot of good information there. Um, I think that also if you, if you understand supply chain math, what they're doing becomes so obvious. Um, you know, in, in the Waypoint universe, we have a, we can we can do a, what's called an SKU whale curve, mm -hmm. and we can see that 10% of the items are generating 500% of the operating profit, and we got a couple percent that are destroying you know 300% of the, the operating profit. So Amazon came along to the book guys initially, mm -hmm. and they said, "Gee, the book guys are selling the top 200, well, the best sellers at 20 off. Mm -hmm. They're still making a killing." Mm -hmm. You know, we could sell them at 40 off and make a killing if we didn't have all that retail overhead and all that, those dust collecting volumes that you see at Barnes & Noble. Uh -huh. um, and so they basically skimmed the cream and left, you know, the booksellers with the, with the bad stuff. But then what they said is, actually, we could offer all 4 million books plus 8 million more used books out of print, but we'll use a different model. So it's fulfillment by Amazon. They don't actually buy the book and have their money tied up in their warehouse. Mm -hmm. They solicit publishers and used book people and say, 
you want to ship it to us, well, as a third-party logistics person, we'll charge you a fee to receive it, a fee to store it, a pick it, and sell it type of thing. Mm -hmm. And people are willing to do that to try to grow a business. Um, well, I think uh, one of the most important things you just brought up is that the whole concept of the whale curve. And if you look at how our businesses actually operate, on the uh, left-hand end of the whale curve, we have all the super winners, the, the uh, products that have low transaction counts, uh, therefore low uh, operating costs, and, and, and uh, margin or the spread between the gross profit and the cost of serve is high. Mm -hmm. And they generate, um, in some cases, three, four, five times the profit that we generate in the whole business mm -hmm. is generated just in the head of the whale. Mm -hmm. And then we have the tail of the whale that takes about three quarters of that and then sort of basically those dollars are shifting from one end to the other. Right. And so the actual dynamics of business is we have, lot, we have a very few super profitable items that basically subsidize our sales, the money losing sales of these other things, and there's enough left over that we, that we have a bottom line. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when um, Amazon took, went after the book business, they said, you know, we'll, we'll let other people do this tail end where they're losing money, but we're going to take the part where there's super, super good margins. Mm -hmm. And then since we don't have the logistic costs of other people, we can let those margins drop down and we can still be good. Sure. So what happens to a distributor um, when uh, Amazon goes into, their, uh, into the, the market and says, all we want is the things you really make money on right. and we're going to lower the price on there. Just in order to be competitive, we're going to wind up losing some of those profits that we use to subsidize the rest of the line. Hey, you know, you, you could even have, you could be a regular distributor and competing with a Waypoint distributor who figures out what's going on and say, you know what, we'll go be more aggressive in these, these prices, you know, because we, we, we know the whole story. So yeah. you, you don't want to be in the dark, is the point. Uh, as far as Amazon supply, I think initially they're going to put a much bigger hurt on people, catalog people like uh, WW Granger, MSC Industrial. Um, where you know people go and find it, put it in the basket, buy it with their credit card. Their credit card's on file, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and and you know most distributors say, well, actually, you know, Granger's got products I do. I've got 300. They've got eight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that a lot of my bigger customers have mi miscellaneous midnight second shift handymen that may be buying stuff from Granger. Mm -hmm. You know, Granger tends to get two, three percent sort of maverick purchases, emergency kind. Of, where am I going to get it? I'll go to Granger kind of stuff. Right. Um, but in the, it, with Amazon Supply, if you went to the 20% of your customers that are 80% of your potential volume, sales volume, mm -hmm. um, and said, look, what is everything that you need to buy? How do I put that together and how do I get it to you and through you? And what is your demand replenishment system physical thing in-house? In, in well, Amazon's not going to do that. Yeah, I mean, that, you're, you have the, the, with Waypoint Analytics, you can go out there with a supply chain math and you can give precision custom replenishment solutions to big guys that Amazon can't touch. And that's going to, that's going to raise that barrier. They're right. not going to be able to have parity right. with that, so they're not yeah. going to be able to customers away. So that's a good defensive strategy. Uh, the thing that I'm concerned about, uh, though, is what happens, we know that if the head of the whale drops, the back of the whale drops, the tail of the whale drops, and that, of course the tip of the tail is what your bottom line is in mm -hmm. the company, mm -hmm. that'll drop below zero sure. um, if companies don't have some way of shortening the tail. Right. So the things that we've been recommending in terms of tactics you've been recommending for decades and that um, uh, Waypoint clients have been using for some time are things that basically recognize what the costs are, are over on that right hand side right. and then bring those um, uh, and basically shorten that tail, bring the tail up. Mm -hmm. So if you have any disruption of the front end, you're still going to have a bottom line. So right. those skills that you need in order to manage the tail of the whale, the money losing products, sure. are going to be very, very important if somebody crams down the head where you're, where, where you're getting those subsidies from. Right, right. So. Uh, so those kinds of tactics, I think, are going to be really, really necessary in sure. order to be uh, defensive and to make sure that you're uh, uh, not harmed mm -hmm. uh, by an entry of this of a player of this kind into the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. Because even if they don't take your customers, they are going to affect the pricing environment on the best products where there's right. uh, abundant profits available right now. Mm -hmm. One thing I'd be curious to do is, is uh, when you look at the tail of your, your SKU whale curve, mm -hmm. you find highly popular 
uh, small pick items. You know, it's, mm -hmm. every day, people want a dollar of it all the time. So we're out there picking the warehouse and putting a little bag and you know billing the guy and so forth and losing our rear tail. I mean, the margin could be 100% on a dollar and you've got eight dollars to pick it. You're still going to lose seven bucks. If you go to Amazon and say how do how what 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 do they what do they charge me for one double A battery? You say, guy, you can't buy them. You got to buy an Amazon private label pack of 18. Or if they've got a pack of 12, it's an add-on item. In other words, you can't buy that unless you're buying other stuff. So uh, yeah. they even with their super low cost, no people involved. Your customer does it picking, da, ba, ba, outsource right. the credit card. There's no outside salesperson, inside salesperson. They do have warehouse people, which are world class automated, you know, warehouse right. people, robots even. Right. Um, so they're going to be a distributor in that too. Uh, but but even with that, you can see that they're they're saying, hey, come on, buddy, you use a lot of these on an annual basis, so just buy a bundle of them. Well, that's actually a good point because from a uh, if you take a look at what Amazon actually does um, uh, through the lens of a P&L. You know, at the top there's a line for order entry. You know, you're paying people to enter orders in or type yeah, them into yeah, the terminals yeah. of the counter. Now they're having the customers enter their own orders through the web. Right. Uh, you get down to um, uh, uh, everybody has warehousing costs, including uh, Amazon. You get to the um, uh, uh, to the receivables costs. They've outsourced all of that to Visa and Mastercard, and so uh, who are more than happy to take businesses and have them use the business Visa. Um, uh, to do the purchasing, so they don't have any receivables issues. They don't have AR people collections, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So they've taken that out of the, out of the mix. And then again, one of the highest expenses most companies has is the sales force, and uh, Amazon has replaced the sales force um, as it was. You know, as it used to be, the sales guy was the source of information. You sure. know, speeds and feeds and specs and making sure people got the right product. That kind of went away with uh, Google. Sure, sure. And Amazon has a place where you can find out all about the product right. on your own without right. a person being involved in yeah, it. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's just it's another stage of the, of the life cycle of distribution chains. That's all. Mm -hmm. you know, we've seen you know, the old corner grocery store. That was a model. Then it got superseded by the grocery store where you help yourself out at the, at the edge of town because you had a car now and you could mm -hmm. drive out there and park. And then along comes Walmart and decides to get in the grocery business and has 35% share. Um, so the, you, you can see these progressions. Now, from a Salesforce viewpoint, uh, instead of being a rocket roadster, sort of having a milk run territory, time and territory management, calling mm -hmm. on big guys more often and little guys less often, whether the big guys want to see you or not, and whether the little guys can even support your economic, that's what we're doing. Uh, we have to say, well, wait a minute. How 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 is the the role of the sales rep changing? It's shrinking as far as total number of accounts that can actually support the rep. And how is that changing? And what's the rep? What are the tools the rep needs to know and have to go out there and do a higher level value added? Yeah, and that's not to say that, that we're seeing the reps go away. What we are seeing is that the um, uh, that uh, reps, uh, as always, are changing the level of sophistication in what they do. Mm -hmm. And um, now, when we want to have those defensible accounts, where now uh, we're you know going out and and uh, developing a relationship with the customer, not not a relationship you know how's your wife, how's your dog, but a relationship in I understand your business and we're working together to uh, lower your procurement costs and for us to basically understand your needs sure, at a granular sure. level and then be able to deliver on those things. Yeah, I I think to be ready you know for the biggest best customers to say we have all the supply chain math, we have service value chain solutions when you're ready for supply chain solutions, and you may even have customers that say. We want to change how we want to buy. And you say, well, you can't say, I don't speak that. You know, you say, I need to have my math so I can be a co-creator and not get stuck in a, a thing where I'm upside down type of thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we have to anticipate that. And, I, and I'd say, you know, if you looked at Amazon and said, how many employees do they have working on analytics? Mm -hmm. I mean, for all I know, they have 5,000 people and they've got all the analytics you can imagine in the world. How is a... Eight million dollar one location distributor going to match that? And the answer is they don't have to, yeah. because all distributors basically break bulk, reassort, and ship out. They all exist for hub economics. Right. They all exist basically to offer a one-stop shop assortment of stuff to lower the customer's total procurement costs at a higher price. The customer could buy direct, but they have to buy a ton of it, and then what do you? you know, all their other hidden costs go up. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and all the functions that make this product flow through are very standard across the channel. So we can create in Waypoint basically this turnkey tool shed. And because it's cloud, 
you can only you buy it by the sip. You only pay it, you know, as you use it type of thing. So, yeah. to be able to collapse the barrier to entry to have you know good enough supply chain math analytics so that you can understand exactly what they're doing and figure out how to imitate them where it makes sense and figure out how to preempt them where you can with your best customers. You got to do it. Well, it's interesting that uh, not that much has changed. You know, uh, 30 years ago, I was in a buying group of a multi-billion dollar company. We had salespeople that called on me every day that uh, represented different lines. And, uh, and there was a pretty broad spectrum of capability of salespeople. And the very best guys are still the same kinds of guys that are the same best guys today. They're the guys that understood our logistics chain. They're the guys that understood the business, what my objectives were on the buying uh, side. And we're finding creative solutions to integrate more tightly with yeah. what we did yeah. and would become the ideal supplier rather than just a guy that sold some product. Yeah. And, um, uh, uh, and I've seen some very, very capable salespeople across uh, time. And the real winners were never the guys that were responding to my price request. They were the guys that were basically giving me operational excellence um, in, on my own side sure. by, by being a better match for what, what it was that we, we did. Sure. Well, you know, price is important, but it's an and both thing, or it's and all. And, and uh, best guys come out and say, look, do you have any bigger, you know, need than to grow your bottom line? Yeah. No, actually, uh, growing my bottom line is really kind of what this company's all about type of thing. Well, where is the living edge of, of your agenda? And, you know, let me understand how I can help you continuously improve the buy-sell process relationship we have or once you get all the business, it's like, thank you, but now how can I help you grow your business so I can feed you more product? I mean, that, yeah. those are tens. They're consultants. And i got to say, you know, I'm a 20-something-year-old guy in the yeah. buying group and whatnot. I'd only read the first page of the buyer's manual, and uh, sure. I just hammered everybody on price because it was the only thing I knew. Uh, but some of, the, um, uh, some of the old dogs I dealt with um, had a better insight into what I needed to do than I did. Sure. And I actually have a debt of gratitude to a number of them I they could name 30 buyer. years later that yeah. basically yeah. Uh, helped me be a hero in, inside the company. Mm -hmm. So I think the sales force is changing, uh, but I think you know, the more it changes, the more it remains the same. It's, that, it's the skill and the procurement cost and the integration, uh, being able to be a better fit for our company that really sure. uh, wins the day. Because I could name all, well, I can't name them anymore. I've long since forgot them, but the vast majority of the guys that came in basically were just a waste of my time. Sure, sure. So the, but there was a few stars out there that really made it. And I would expect anybody that has those stars um, uh, would be uh, better off as a, as a selling organization. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, uh, to wrap up, um, Amazon Supply is going to be uh, very much a fact of life. Uh, they're not as big and scary as, they, as uh, most people think because uh, even though they have some really terrific capabilities in, in a lot of cases, um, if we're good at what we do, the best they can achieve is parity, and that's not enough to win the day. If we're looking at a, um, uh, a situation where there are things that they are going to do to us, being forewarned is forearmed, and developing your skills in making sure you're controlling the tail end of the whale is going to serve you well, if they come along and attack the head, you're going to basically be able to survive that kind of thing and thrive still and make a good profit on the spread as long as uh, your business uh, is fine-tuned to the point where you don't any longer have to um, uh, count on the cross-subsidies from the head in order to be able to make it successful. So those kinds of skills and the changes that are necessary for that will give you a good bulwark against the uh, encroach uh, encroachment. Uh, of, the, of uh, Amazon supply and other companies that may adopt the same kind of model uh, in the future and uh, give you an opportunity to survive and thrive um, and by doing the kind of job uh, that they fear uh, that you will. So uh, thanks a lot. We have a lot more videos with other topics and we'd like to have you come back and see more of them in the future, but for so, uh, but so long for now. Hi, Bruce Merrifield again. Um, if you found this video helpful, uh, then we have more to share with you. Uh, and the way you can do that is to head over to the APIC conference. Uh, so it's apicconference2cs.com slash profit and sign up for our Innovative Profit Tips series. It's a good collection of materials, all designed to show you how to drive more revenue in the distribution sector without having to increase your sales, although they may go up. Uh, or you can simply text your name and email address to, here's the number, write it down, 480-207-3433, and we'll get you started right away.